My name is Aaron Amick. I used to be a sonarman until they handed me my DD-214 and now I'm retired. When you're retired, you got nothing, man. You got no job, no sonar, no submarine. Now I'm stuck playing any Cold World Naval game that comes along, hanging out with anybody who will chat with me on Twitch, like an old moderator who's informing on me to the FBI. Subscribers too if you're desperate. The bottom line is, until you figure out what you're going to do in retirement, you might as well play games on Twitch. Welcome to it, everybody. Happy Friday. I'm glad you could make it through the week. Today, we got some really big naval news, so we're going to start off the stream with this immediately. This is extremely important uh, to get the facts out there because already there's some misinformation flying around the internet. So what we're going to do today is cover what happened to the USS Connecticut last Saturday, October 2nd, while she was underway submerged in the South China Sea. Um, a lot of people knew about this after it happened, but it wasn't publicly announced until uh, October 7th. So um, we couldn't really talk about it until then, until now, but we are going to cover what happened today. We're also going to cover China's response, uh, the United States Navy's official position on this, uh, what damage happened to the submarine and the crew itself. And then I'm going to do an open source intelligence analysis of the facts that we know now and, you know, what could have led up and what is the result of this collision at sea. So I hope you really do enjoy this. So let's begin with a, a really great naval news uh, source called uh, USNI.org. I would recommend everybody go to USNI.org for all their naval news. Uh, this piece written by Sam Legrone says an updated uh, version of the story that we're going to be reading from today is an attack submarine USS Connecticut suffers underwater collision in the South China Sea. This happened October 2nd, uh, last Saturday, I believe that was. Um, he says almost a dozen sailors were injured on board the U.S. nuclear attack submarine when a nuclear U.S. attack submarine uh, hit an unknown underwater object in the South China Sea, USNI News has learned. Uh, the Sea Wolf-class nuclear attack submarine USS Connecticut, SN-22, suffered an underwater collision while operating in international waters on October 2nd and is returning to the U.S. 7th Fleet, U.S. Pacific Fleet, spokesman's uh, confirmed USNI on Thursday. That's yesterday as of time of this recording. Uh, a quote from the piece is, the Sea Wolf class fast attack submarine USS Connecticut SSN-22 struck an object while submerged on the afternoon of October 2nd while operating in international waters in the Indo-Pacific region. The safety of the crew remains the US Navy's top priority. There are no life-threatening injuries, says Captain Bill Clinton to, that's what he's doing now, told USNI News. The submarine remains in a safe, stable condition. USS Connecticut's nuclear propulsion plant uh, spaces were not affected and remain fully operational. That's very important for us. Uh, the extent of the damage to of the <coughs> the extent of damage to the remainder of the submarine is being assessed. Uh, the U.S. Navy has not requested assistance. The incident will be investigated. So what's happening now is uh, the submarine is returning to Guam. It could be at Guam already as time of this recording. If it's not now, it will be there uh, by tomorrow. Um, and there they're going to conduct a full assessment of, of all the equipment on board. Of course, the sailor's health is the primary concern. Fortunately, it looks like that uh, the injuries were limited to just minor lacerations, which is like small cuts, bruises. You know, people got bounced around inside the submarine, but thankfully no hospitalizations, no medical evacuations, nothing like that. So we got very lucky here, and we're going to talk about how this happened. Let's read a little bit more from the piece written by Sam Legrone uh, to see if he can add any context to this before I get into my spiel. Um, he says, a defense official told USNI News about 11 sailors were hurt in the incident with moderate to, to minor injuries. The attack boat is now headed to Guam and is expected to pull in within the next day. Exactly what I said. The uh, underwater strike occurred in the South China Sea. And the attack boat has been making its way to Guam on the surface since Saturday. The naval base uh, Kipson Bur uh, Bremerton, Washington base submarine deployed on May 27th. So it's been at sea for a few months now. Uh, the Navy announced at the time the service is has released photographs of the submarine operating in the Western Pacific with port calls in Japan in late July and August. U.S. 7th Fleet Commander uh, Admiral Carl Thomas visited the submarine in August, according to the surface. 
The Connecticut is only one of three Sea Wolf class submarines, a late Cold War attack class submarine designed to hunt the most complex Soviet submarines in deep blue water, along with the U.S. Sea Wolf SSN 21 and USS Jimmy Carter SSN 23. The Connecticut is among the Navy's most capable and sensitive attack boats. That's very true. Good statement. I concur with all of the statements. Um, and then he goes into some history about the last time this happened. It was USS San Francisco, SSN 711, who uh, struck an underwater mountain near Guam, where one sailor actually died in that incident. Uh, and a contributing factor to the sailor dying in that incident was speed. They were transiting at high speed when they hit the underwater mountain, uh, again, bouncing everybody around. But unfortunately, that sailor hit something very you know, heavy enough to, to kill him. All right, so let's take a look at what the U.S. Navy is saying here. Uh, this is an official statement from the United States Navy, website navy.mil. Statement regarding USS Connecticut SSN-21 uh, announced 07 October of this year from U.S. Pacific Fleet Public Affairs. Uh, the USS Connecticut SN-21 struck an object while submerged on October 2nd while operating in international waters in the Indo-Pacific region. There are no life-threatening injuries, period. And here's a stock photo of the uh, submarine we are talking about in question, clearly before this incident. But those of you watching this, I want you to keep this photo in mind because this is what we're going to talk about at the end of the lecture here. This is very important, what's coming up. Okay, from Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, the Sea Wolf Fast Tech Class submarine USS Connecticut struck an object while submerged on the afternoon of October 2nd while operating in international waters in the Indo-Pacific region. The safety of the crew always remains the Navy's top priority while there are no life-threatening injuries. The submarine re remains in safe and stable condition. The US, USS Connecticut's nuclear propulsion plant and spaces were not affected and remains fully operational. The extent and damage... Uh, to the remainder of the U.S. submarine is being assessed because clearly there's probably some damage because um, they definitely hit something. Um, back to the quote, it says, the U.S. Navy has not requested assistance. The incident will be investigated. So they do not need assistance at sea, uh, like a tow or anything like that. That's what they're talking about. Uh, there, it's able to return to port under its own power. It will be Guam, and uh, that's where it will be investigated. Now, let's talk about China real quick. Credit to Newsweek. Uh, Newsweek was the only source I found that had the quote from China. So full credit to them for this. China has expressed grave concerns about the U.S. Navy submarine that hit an unknown object in the South China Sea last week. Uh, Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijin said Friday that China urged the U.S. to provide details, its purpose for cruising, whether it had caused a nuclear leak or damaged the marine environment, the state-owned newspaper Global Times reported. Uh, U.S. Navy officials speaking anonymously to the Associated Press on Thursday, yesterday at the time of this recording, said that an American nuclear submarine hit an object while submerged in the waters in the South China Sea. This is how we know the Indo-Pacific region claim that the uh, official post puts out there is more specifically limited to the South China Sea. It's because of this anonymous source. So that's why we're all claiming that this is where that happened. For those of you wondering why we're narrowing it down to this. Uh, injuring 11 sailors on board, the submarine remains fully operational for op for the official said, with the U.S. Navy later adding that there are no life-threatening injuries. Again, scrapes, bumps, and bruises. You know, clearly injuries, but not life-threatening. No hospitalization needed. No medical evac needed. <clears throat> it's returning to port under its own power. In the short statement on Twitter, the U.S. Pacific Fleet provided little detail on the incident apart from the USS Connecticut struck an unknown object on October 2nd. It added that the incident will be investigated. And then here is a, um, a capture from Twitter where they made that statement and included the photo that we had at the beginning of this of the uh, USNI story. So very interesting. Those are the facts as we know it. Um, and so, again, credit to uh, really all the naval news sites. Naval News had this story. The Drive War Zone had this story. Um, U.S., you know, the U.S. Naval Institute, the story that we referenced, obviously, and then Newsweek, of course, with the Chinese response. Credit to all those websites. Uh, I couldn't cover all of them here. I had to pick one, uh, but I had the choice of the litter here. 
So now that we know what happened, we are going to talk about a little bit of analysis. I'm going to give you a little bit of what I think happened. And this is where this video, if you're watching this on YouTube, we are transitioning from the facts, from the official um, release into some speculation and analysis by me. Any mistakes from this point on are my own. Uh, let's quickly reference uh, chat, make sure everything is okay. Um, how's my volume and everything? Cause I usually do that during the gameplay, but no, everything looks like it's okay. Yeah. This is where we're going into facts or, uh, into speculation rather Scott QC. Thank you. Says, uh, being that it transited on the surface, uh, and sub secrecy is paramount. That would lead me to believe that the damage, the hull was significant enough to not chance a dive. Right. Well, that, that's a great piece of speculation. Um, I did not see in the piece where it said it was transiting on the surface. So uh, if someone else is reporting that, that's uh, up to them. Uh, it did not say how it was getting back to Guam. If it was doing a surface transit, I would expect it to take quite a while, but I suppose it's been a week. Maybe there is enough time to do that. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Okay, so let's talk about where this happened. First, this is the South China Sea, uh, courtesy of uh, Google Earth, Google Maps. And uh, this is the body of water between Vietnam and the Philippines, south of China, hence the name. Uh, this is a very interesting body of water because it is complex to navigate. It is a series. It's an underwater hazard, uh, very active seismic uh, mounds, uh, lots of vo underwater volcanoes and seismic activity, earthquakes that go through this area that continuously change the topography uh, beneath the waves. Undersea navigation here is hazardous. And uh, here you can see a picture of what a lot of these undersea mounds look like. I wish we could take the camera underwater to give you a three-dimensional view of this, but from this top-down perspective, you can see the grade, the graduated shading showing that these are little pinnacles that come up like chimneys from the bottom of the ocean uh, all the way to the surface and create atolls and little islands. And so because these are constantly rising and falling uh, relatively rapidly on a geological time scale of, you know, millennia, this happens very fast. But what that means is your charts, no matter how recent they are, may not be accurate. That's just something to keep in mind. Uh, that is a callback to the USS San Francisco. Whenever it hit an unknown sea mountain, they did not know about it because they had some human error, they had the wrong chart, but even the chart that they had was not updated properly or it didn't reflect the sea mound uh, that they hit. So even if they had the right chart, it wouldn't have made that much of a difference. Uh, that is exacerbated in this area when you're transiting submerged. There's a lot of things that are constantly changing here. And how submarines operate is not public knowledge. So I'm not going to talk about some of the means and methods we use to mitigate and lessen the risk of this happening. Uh, there's a lot there. There is a theory out there called the big ocean theory and that it's an awfully big ocean. It's highly unlikely you're going to hit anything, but collisions still happen. So sometimes it's just a matter of playing the odds. But that is not how United States submarines operate, which we will not talk about today. So let's take a look at what we know. Um, this means we get to break out everyone's favorite tool. You guys know it, it's coming, it's whiteboard. That's right, return of the whiteboard. Uh, it's a sad that it has to be a submarine collision to get this back onto the screen, but this is what we're gonna do. And we're gonna talk about what could have happened to the Sea Wolf right here. And see if I can draw my submarines anymore. Now the Sea Wolf's got bow planes, so we're gonna put the little bow planes down here. So what do we know? Let's go with fact number one. Fact number one is that she was submerged. So we're gonna put the little water at the top and she's at the bottom, okay? Uh, we found from a US anonymous spokesperson that she was in the South China Sea submerged. South China Sea, as we just pointed out, all sorts of little chimneys coming up from the bottom like this. You know, just very difficult navigation area. Okay, so that's what the topography looks like. Those are the conditions. Now we know that she hit something that injured sailors, but did not kill anybody like it did with the uh, 25 plus knot uh, impact that happened with the San Francisco. And there's a little bit of randomness and bad luck involved in whether or not someone gets seriously injured or not. But we're gonna um, 
go with the odds and say it is likely that the USS Connecticut, the Sea Wolf class submarine, was not transiting at, say, a flank bell or even a full bell whenever she hits something. So let's begin speculating what was her speed. And we're going to kind of bring this over here to this side of the screen. So, you know, in order to maintain normal underway, let's say she was just patrolling around there, not really in a hurry to go anywhere. She may be going as slow as five knots. That's possible. Now, if you hit something at five knots, that's like a little bit like being in a bumper car. You're not expecting to be hit from behind. You get hit from behind. It throws your head forward in the bumper car, and that's the impact that you feel. Or if you've ever been in a golf cart, five to 10 knots, depending on how fancy your golf cart is, and you get and you hit something, that's what that feels like. That's not really going to bump and bruise you, uh, but it's also not going to break your bones either. Okay. So we're going to say something greater than five knots that didn't break bones in an unexpected blindside impact. So complete speculation on my part, I'm going to say between five and 15 knots. If you get hit at 15 knots unexpectedly, you're not only going to be battered and bruised, you could anything more than that easily break a bone depending on what you're being bounced around in. There's lots of things in a nuclear submarine that when you get, if you get hit unexpectedly, you could easily injure yourself seriously. So we're going to just guess she was somewhere between five, 15 knots submerged in the South China Sea in an environment that looks like something out of Jurassic Park because it's pretty, the, the topography is is insane in the South China Sea. So she's down there doing this. Now, this happened uh, on Saturday afternoon. So in the 90s, and this may not apply to today, everybody is awake on Saturday. Everybody gets up in the morning and we do six hours of cleaning the ship. That's the morning routine on a Saturday. Yeah. So you work, you know, a Monday through Friday week, and then you're rewarded with the weekend beginning with six hours of cleaning, additional duty. Yeah. Uh, now, they may not be doing that. That may be an old school Navy thing. But if that's likely, after everybody ate and uh, had lunch, they probably went back to the rack if they didn't have to go back on watch. So uh, it's likely that a lot of people, this may have saved injuries, were in the rack whenever this happened. Um, so... What did they hit? So they, they were definitely submerged when they hit. There's a couple different things that they could have hit. So let's go with uh, what color do we want to use? Let's use green. Let's use let's use black. So obviously, even though they're submerged, they can still hit a ship. OK, this is still possible. That's a little smoke coming out of the top there. They could still hit a ship. So how does that happen? Well, the most the most uh, likely time for a submarine to collide with something is when it's changing depth. Whenever it's going to periscope depth, especially, it's extremely vulnerable to colliding with a surface ship. Normally, this is done at a five knot speed within our range of speculation here. It's done very slowly. It doesn't have to be five knots, but very, very slowly. And as they come up, if the ship, for whatever reason, is being very quiet or they just don't hear it, they could come up and hit it. But I do not think that this was the case because had they hit, say, a civilian ship, like some of our we had some collisions, say, three or four years ago among our early brick destroyers hitting tankers. You had two casualties. You had the ship, the warship, and you had the civilian ship. Well, there are no civilian ships that we're aware of after a week that have been damaged, that have pulled into port for repairs, uh, including warships. So really don't think that uh, she hit a ship in any way. And keep in mind, some of these container ships have extremely deep drafts. So she may not even be in the process of changing depth or going to periscope depth or anything like that and could still possibly hit a very deep draft merchant. Because uh, like I said, some of these merchants, when they're fully laden, have go deep into the water, upwards of 80 and more feet. So that's one speculation that I want to just kind of get out of the way. Probably didn't hit another ship. Something else that could have happened is they could hit one of these things. This is an extra large unmanned underwater vehicle. These things are prowling around the South China Sea right now in real time. But the problem with this theory is these things, the largest of them, only weigh about 45 tons. The, the Sea Wolf public record weighs 9.1 thousand tons. If it were to hit even the largest unmanned underwater vehicle, it would brush it aside like it was a, a cool breeze. It wouldn't even maybe notice it. The sonarman would hear it, and that's about it. 
The same goes with marine life. The largest whale. One will get out of your way. I've seen this myself. They are curious animals, but they don't want to get hit. So uh, hitting a UUV or marine life, highly unlikely in this case. Um, just going to push it out of the way. So where, what does that leave us? Well, it could have been another submarine. That's what everybody wants to know. Well, I'll tell you what, if it was, if it was one of our submarines, one, we would have a, a public statement about two submarine crews that are returning to port whether that port is in the UK because it's a UK crew or whatever, or it's an American crew, doesn't matter. If it was one of ours, we would have had a public statement like we had with the Sea Wolf. So not an American or NATO or UK or any friendly submarine. What if it was a Chinese submarine? Well, we saw from the Chinese statement, they were not accusing us of a collision. They want to know what happened. They're saying, what did you hit? Why were you even there in the first place? So we know it wasn't a Chinese submarine and everybody else in that region is friendly to us. So it was not a submarine on submarine collision, I think. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to draw a little UUV here thing's only 45 tons. It was not a UUV. It was not, because it's not even been speculated yet, another submarine. What does that leave us? It's not a fish, not a UUV. That leaves this bottom, this crazy topography. It is extremely likely, in my opinion, that she brushed the bottom. She ran aground, which you can do very easily while submerged, especially in this very complex environment. And without going into means and methods, uh, while there are tools to prevent that from happening, you don't always have to use those tools. It depends on what state the sea wolf was in when she was operating in this area. And they will not make that public and therefore we will never know what was the state of the submarine, what, what, what was the condition, that's probably a better word for it. What were the sonarmen doing? Because you're not gonna hear uh, a mountain that's not moving, right? So it's not their fault if they're doing that. Anyway, so probably uh, ran aground, brushed one of these little pinnacles at a speed between five and 15 knots is what I think happened. So I'm going to end this part of the Naval News with a call to action. We need one thing that any civilian out there can give us, and it's going to tell us for sure what happened if you do this. And let's go to, if I can find it. Okay, no, I uh, can't find it. So she is going to pull in to Guam. Like I said, we need someone on Guam with a camera. And I don't care if it's your iPhone or whatever it is. Take a picture of where the uh, sea wolf is and post that on Twitter. What we're looking for is, is the top of the submarine. And I need to pull this picture up. Let's do this. Let's use this picture. Is the top of the submarine, this part, the sail, or even the top side, any of it covered in a tarp? Does it have any kind of construction over? Are they trying to hide anything on the top side of the submarine? Because like we learned with the San Francisco and other collisions that happened in the Cold War era, that if it ran aground, the damage will almost likely be limited to the main pressure hull of the submarine that's here. There may be a little bit of damage topside, but it won't be much. But if the sail and the topside, specifically where this gentleman is standing, where this hull is, has the uh, non-skid removed from it, then it definitely hits something above the submarine. Do you know what's not above the submarine? A freaking sea mount is not above the submarine and therefore it did hit a submarine. And then the rabbit hole gets really deep. We need the photo. And I don't care if it's covered up or not. Like we don't need the photo of the actual submarine itself because it's probably going to be in a, in a barn. They're going to get this thing into a dry dock and cover it up probably as soon as possible. Before that happens, we need someone with a camera to take a photo of it. Tarps, covers and all, everything they're trying to hide. That's what we need. If you can get a picture of that, we will know what happened. I'll tell you what happened, but we need that photo. And again, she's pulling into Guam either today. She might be there right now by the pier, get down to the water, take that freaking photo. We need it. Or she'll be pulling in tomorrow. And then we can discuss uh, further speculation. All right. This is a lot of fun. Thank God nobody got hurt. That's the most important thing. Uh, I don't think we hit anybody else. So that's great too. Uh, what do you guys think about this? 
Follow the White Rabbit, says Alonzo. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I get excited about this because this is open source intelligence. Uh, this is what the OSINT community does. And uh, we get a chance to do it uh, in real time with a very capable submarine. It's just a shame that uh, it happens to be one of ours, unfortunately. But hey, you know, we take what we can get. All right, Ethan, <laughs> I get a lot of, uh, you guys are saying I'm crazy. Okay, maybe, yeah, yeah. Uh, it says, could have been struck by an underwater shipwreck. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. So, like, the South China Sea held that entire region um, on top of this topography has a lot of shipwrecks, not just from World War II, but just shipwrecks in general. Uh, so if she was very near the bottom for whatever reason, we're not going to speculate on why she was there, there she could have hit uh, an uncharted shipwreck because they are thousands of those. There's more uncharted shipwrecks probably than charted ones in this region of the world specifically. Yeah. How about hitting a, a shipping crane underwater? Yeah. So if like a, a, if a tanker or whatever, some kind of civilian ship sank and had a protruding part of the hull, like a crane, uh, you could certainly hit part of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All of your theories that you guys are speculating on are just as valid as anything I think, because the truth is none of us really know what happened. There's a group of about 120 sailors on board the USS Connecticut that have the best guess as to what happened. Uh, there will be an investigation. The Navy will probably make a public statement that won't give us really any answers. What we need is that photo of the Guam waterfront right now. That's what we need. Um, let's see, Albon says, could a trim party have caused this? Probably not. Uh, the Sea Wolf, without going to detail, I'm pretty sure it's public, has a very good, let's put it that way, it has a very good trim system. And uh, we won't go into any details about it. Again, I don't talk about American submarines just for this because I know the answer to your question, uh, but I don't want to say anything that will get me in trouble. Um, what do you guys, Sailor says, I guess we will have to wait to see if any foreign subs are, are overdue. Yeah, uh, the most likely collision, in my opinion, would have been with a Chinese submarine because we wouldn't have had water space management. There wouldn't have been any coordination between our two nations like we have with just about everybody else in that region. So if it is a sub on sub collision, which I don't think it is, uh, it would most likely be with China and China would be on the horn immediately. They wouldn't have waited a week to accuse us of anything. China probably didn't even know this happened happen until they made the public statement yesterday that's how far out of the loop they are they should create a twitter account and pay attention like the rest of us anyway big shout to the us the osint community those of you that knew about this and kept your mouth shut until it was publicly announced thank you for that that goes a long way with me being able to keep a secret in today's social media age is is a great quality in a person and so i respect every one of you that knew about this and didn't go public uh, toilet says the China won't say anything. You still don't think that they will because they would be like embarrassed maybe to say it that they got hit. That's you know what the Soviets and there was one occasion in the Cold War where it was a UK submarine and a, um, a Soviet Yankee collided with each other off the coast of Scotland. And they didn't say anything right away. I think eventually the story came out. That's how I know about it. But uh, you're right. There is a precedent in the past for great powers to not admit to submarine collisions right away. So your theory certainly is valid. Okay, are we ready to go on? Let's move on to a different topic.